really great to have Spencer coming from Dowhouse as well as Ray Gill joining us today. Yeah, fantastic. Maybe you can start by saying, uh, making an introduction about Dowhouse. Yeah, so Dowhouse is, um, we actually struggle a little bit with the words to use. Because <laughs> there's all, the, all these different ways to think, think about yes. it. But one way to think about it is as um, uh, an easy way to create and then to be in and kind of manage a Moloch DAO. Mm -hmm. Um, Moloch DAOs are, the reason we're focusing on Moloch DAOs is because what we're, what we're the direction we are going is uh, you know, community oriented, like humanistic DAOs where there's a, like a small to medium sized community that is working together towards some, some goal or has some shared, shared values that they want to advance or kind of live together. And Moloch DAOs are, are a great way to do that and DAO House is the is the easiest way to to use and interact with and, and be part of, of a Moloch DAO. Yeah. So we're building lots of uh, like just kind of no code point and click kind of kind of ways to summon a new Moloch DAO, mm -hmm. to join a new a join a DAO if you're not already in one or join another one. Yeah. And then lots of tooling like around the edges to help DAOs be more productive or create more value for for themselves and their members. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, yeah, that's that's the house. That's really really a great way to put it. And what's your own personal journey into like quite a few DAOs that are really the many things that keep Ethereum community going, right? All these grants yeah. as well as Ray. Um, what's your personal story into the DAO space? Yeah, so I, so the first DAO I joined was Raid Guild, um, and that was about sixteen months ago, something like that. Uh, June, I don't, I can't count months now, but June of twenty twenty. Yeah. And I was still working for my like corporate job full time <laughs> really? at, at at that point. Yeah. Um, but I kind of met a couple of people who are in Raid Guild, and I had sort of heard of it through like Twitter basically before, and um, I knew that it was an awesome group of really talented Web three builders, and I kind of got an opportunity to see how it worked, and it seemed really really awesome, and I and I joined and I started going on. We call them, we go on raids, yeah. uh, which are basically our, our client projects that we do. Um, so I, I, I did a couple things for a couple couple of clients, and this was all on the side of my my like day job. Yeah. But knowing that I could like, take on more really at any time gave me the, the confidence to, I had been like doing on the side crypto things for a while. It gave, that gave me the confidence to just quit my other job awesome. and like, go full time in, into DAO and, and Web3 stuff. Yeah. So like I owe a lot to to Raid Guild yeah. for for that reason, and then um, a lot of the guys or a handful of the people that are, are, were and still are in Raid Guild mm -hmm. also started working on on Dow House, and I kind of moved with with them in, into doing more at Dow House. And one of the reasons I, I love doing what we're doing at Dow House is that uh, that's the way that more people are going to be able to have the opportunity that I did, mm -hmm. um, more, creating more. DAOs like Raid Guild, Service DAOs, or more community-oriented DAOs. It's just the way that every people are going to discover that they can have a better, have everything better over on the DAO side. I think so. so I, I'm, I'm really, uh, like, very easy to be motivated to, to yeah, wor work on and build that stuff. Yeah, I've been following your Twitter quite a bit. And uh, the fact that uh, you started with the right group of people at Ray, and then actually come together to do, build the DAO house, I really love the boost features and the modules. Maybe you can say a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I guess if you can think of one way to think about, uh, another way to think about DAO House is almost like an operating system in a sense. Um, because like we're, we're kind of the, the sort of, I guess the, the firmware or the, as close to the hardware as you can get are the, like the DAO smart contracts. But then on top of that is all of the, all the operating system stuff. That makes it easy for users to interact with with those, um, with the the, the the contracts basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In any apps, in, in any operating system, you have applications on top of that, right. and that's one way to think about what our boosts are, which are basically like plugins or add-ons that a DAO or an individual in a DAO can add to their DAO mm -hmm. to give them new capabilities or superpowers or or additional yeah. uh, additional functionality. Yeah. So our where we're going with that is we're, we're trying to build what is effectively an app store for, for boosts. Uh, we're calling it a, the, the boost marketplace. And 
our, our hope for that is it can be a, uh, a permissionless app store. So not something gated by some central company like Apple, Apple. <laughs> but, and not something that takes 30% of the revenues off the top, but more something that there's maybe a small, uh, small bit of, of revenues that go back to the, the Dow House Dow and the, the governors, the, the, basically the, the, the governing body of Dow House, which is called Uber House. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Small, like maybe a tiny little bit goes there, and then the the community can kind of curate and figure out which uh, which boosts are are valuable, which should be which are scams, and we can hide those based on on the community's recommendation. Yeah. But like this whole like uh, emergent bottoms up app store That's or cool. boost marketplaces. And the Dow House looks so good too. How yeah. did you guys come, come with the design and really yeah. bring the branding to uh, the right tone? Well, I th- it comes from the same, like, it's a lot of the same people that that were, were responsible for building up Raid Guild into what it is. Mm-hmm. Raid Guild obviously leans really heavily into mm-hmm. into the meme, mm-hmm. um, into the gaming Games. and and D and D and and that kind of stuff. And that same not not exactly the same aesthetic, but that same concept was was a big driver of of the aesthetic of Dow House, mm-hmm. where. Um, I think it kind of started as like, what would, like being in a DAO is a little bit like playing a game with other people. Yeah. Um, in Raid Guild, we make that very explicit, <laughs> but in other DAOs, it, 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 it's there too. Yeah. So we, our, our designers are pretty amazing and they uh, thought a lot about what would it look like to have a DAO interface that looked and felt more like a game. It, it is, you really and bond the people talk together. We've iterated on it a lot since then. We're kind of constantly revisiting the UX and and the design, the, the, the UI components relating to how the UX is changing. Yeah. So it's it's become a little cleaner over time, mm-hmm. uh, but I, th- I think we've still kept that core, like, kind of gaming feel yeah, to it. Yeah, the play, but also looking like really strong identity. Yeah. And speaking of identity, uh, one yeah. thing that's really important to us, or that we think is really important, is for DAOs to have their own identity and to have their own memes and their own shared language and culture. Mm-hmm. And so we've worked pretty hard to um, reflect that in the way that when you, so if you go to your DAO on DAO House, mm-hmm. it can have a custom theme and a custom background image, and it can look and feel like your DAO, not like anybody else's DAO. And that's really important to you know, community and DAO cohesion, we think. I think so. The playful part is just how everyone interacts, but then the cultural identity of a DAO is really what is possible when you are a DAO, how that actually couldn't spawn like hundreds and thousands of more DAOs to come. Yeah. 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 And uh, it's really amazing Denver, this MCOM happening in such a short amount of time, but also like really leveling up every time that you guys meet together. Yeah. How do you see in a year that you want to drive the whole um, DAO space in a year? Towards? Um, I think one of the things that I, I really want to see is more and more of a DAO economy mm-hmm. starting to, to flourish. Um, so that could look like other DAOs building boosts for DAO House. It could, like, could, could look like service DAOs on, on DAO House or elsewhere, providing services to other DAOs. Yeah. Um, and, and just like this more circular DAOs to, to DAOs with other DAOs, DAO to DAO relations, DAO to DAO <laughs> uh, economic activity. Um, and there's a term that I, that I really like um, so an economy can be you know, reductively defined by its GDP, its gross mm-hmm. domestic product, mm-hmm. but we can think a little bit more playfully about it if in Dow in the Dow world as the gross Dow domestic product. <laughs> so I really want to see like that term being like owned well, and ho- created. Hopefully, values, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, I really like in a year. I really want to see a lot of progress towards towards that driving values, driving yeah. creation of a new economy. You also have a strong view about how cross-chain, multi-chain of the DAO world yeah. will become too. That's, that's a big challenge that every, like, all of us are facing, everybody in, in the crypto world. Um, there's so many chains and, and networks and L, like side chains and L1s and L2s, yeah. And, yeah. Um, which is awesome to see the, the diversity. Mm-hmm. But it makes it really hard because there's lots of things going on, on lots of interesting things going on on lots of uh, different networks. And it makes it hard for a DAO on one network to use and interact with all those other interesting things. So it's going to be really crucial to be able to have a, some like cross-chain abilities for a DAO to 
on, uh, on one network to be able to interact with protocols and applications and whatnot uh, and assets on, on other networks. Sure. Yeah. Hopefully we can bridge them all. Um, I think uh, even for assets, right, like for all the DeFi users, it's only barely possible to move one coin to another. Um, I think people start to talk about cross-chain NFT. Even a roll-up for NFT is what Vitalik said. It's going to be very important. Yeah. Uh, for DAO, I think barely people talk about even multi-chain on DAO, but the moving the identity or even reputation or the different DAOs, uh, uh, like uh, yeah. governance structure votes. Well, what, what do you see the unique challenges of cross-chain DAO compared to like cross-chain asset and cross-chain Yeah, energy? so fungibility is a lot easier to move. move. Mm -hmm. Fungible things are easier to move across, um, across bridges. Um, but NFT, so like ESU, ESU20s are easier. Right. Uh, NFTs are harder because they're non-fungible. And like, what does that mean? You can't really split them up. Like, what does it mean to move something that might have like particular utility baked into the contract, like moving that from one network to another or one chain to another. Um, and DAOs are also, DAOs are like a combination of fungibility and non-fungibility. Yeah. Because DAOs have assets. Yeah. Uh, they have um, both ERC-20s and NFTs. And so, but also like the membership of the DAO is a non-fungible thing. Uh, you can try to like replicate your DAO on another network but then keeping them in sync, like say a new member comes in or a new member leaves, keeping them in sync is really important. Uh, and that's a, that's a big challenge. So there's a lot of work to be done on that front. Yeah, what will be the cross-chain reputation, votes? Mean, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. So last question will be, yeah. how can Harmony be helpful to DAO House? That's, that's a great question. I don't know a good answer. Um, but I think one, one thing that I really want to see is as many other organizations as as can or as want to or, or as possible, building things that can plug into DAO House in some way. Um, we're certainly not trying to create like a closed ecosystem, mm -hmm. but that said, the more that DAO House DAOs can have like have like pluggable access to different things, the more powerful those DAOs can be and the, the more successful they can be at what they want to do. So Harmony building, building some things for that can plug into DAO House would be great. That would be super exciting. We already planned for 100 DAOs. So hopefully we can really get your help to start that, but also like making more boost modules to be helpful. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, yeah, cool. We're, we're excited about anywhere, anywhere where people want to be doing things on DAOs, we, we want to have DAO House support that. Um, so, so that's really cool. Well, thank you, Spencer. Yeah, thank you. It's been a great talk. Yeah. Thank you.